Now this is unreal. I was just going to do a deck update and it's raining. It's not supposed to rain today. I never heard about rain today. Oh well. We're going to do a garden tour, kitty. Kitty, kitty. You don't want to go outside? Kitty! No, she's not going outside. Welcome to Southern Sunny California. Yeah, right. We've been raining today off and on. Hi, it is Robbie from Southern California. And what I'm going to do, I will make it quick. I am just going to give you a zip around my deck garden because what I want you to see, if I get this done, is I think I can turn this into a major food production just in this one spot here. So let's walk around a little bit. Let me tell you what I've done. Whoop, gotta be careful, there's water still falling from the sky. Now you probably saw that bag of soil there for the past couple weeks, it's the same bag. I use such a small amount that I can get away with one bag doing multiple containers. Let's walk over here. I've already planted my radishes. Same thing, using from that bag. I did the cilantro, I did that, I did that. I did more, I did this. This is parsley hanging in a, look at this, a coffee container. Isn't that cute? And it's got the fabric on there, so you don't even know what brand of coffee it is. And then now back there, I've got cilantro too. I've been using the same bag. I'll probably get a second one soon. Oh, let me, you know what? We're gonna do something on soil because I've been going through the different soil that they've got for sale. And let me tell you something. It's funny, it sounds like you're getting more and you're paying, you're paying more and getting less. We're gonna talk about soil because that's actually an interesting topic that I haven't really covered completely. All right, so this is just oregano in here. I don't know if this pepper is gonna make, I stuck it in there for fun. Some mocking onions and a little zinnia. A friend of mine said she needs some oregano. So I separated a little bit off of my oregano I grow there. And now I can give her that and that should fill out really nice when the weather warms. Nothing's really been done here. This is a cutting. That is just a kale from my garden. I threw it in there and look at this. The fabric that I've been using, when you've got the waist around the pants, it's perfect for holding tops on, whether it's tulle or an upside down paper basket, a wire one, it will hold it in place. No dogs or anything will knock it down. That's some more oregano down in the corner. Just a tomato that came up somewhere, kind of covering it around with some kitty litter. I use that on the top as well as mixing in a little bit with my soil. We've talked about it. It has to be pure clay. Don't get anything with perfume or any additives. You don't want that to use for your food product. You only want pure, clean kitty litter. We'll talk more about that as the season goes on. And then look, the stevia is coming back. This is from last year. Look how it's yellow and now it's coming back. So it must think spring is here. And this is all parsley. Why? because I had parsley here go to seed. And the baby parsley fell here. See, there's kitty litter there. So it's helping this lettuce stay nice and damp to grow. But this is all parsley here and some walking onions. So now I can move it. So I moved a couple or four of them, I guess, in here. I guess I moved five in here of some parsley and we'll see how that goes. All right, this is what's gonna be changing very soon. I figured out I can do eight in this section. I'm gonna put the low ones with no real big tops on the bottom. And then the fancy tops I'm making now, which cost nothing, will go on the top. And so this will be my dish pan garden here. This should be fabulous. That is a dish pan, but this is a smaller one. This is just an old one I had from years ago. I gotta ditch that because I don't know what's in there. Um, I said it had garlic in there, so I may have some old garlic in there. But this is turmeric and I wanna get that out and I'll use that somewhere else. So I think this will be really cool, but the cilantro is doing fabulous. Got some kitty litter around my lettuce there. Look how beautiful it is and look how gorgeous this is. Nothing got to it, so it's doing really good. I do keep it covered because I'm not sure if, if I'll get white fly or anything. You know what I get here? We get the black fly. You get that in England, I know that. Look at that in the UK. I'm not worried about it because I think I'm gonna put all this out in the garden. The bush tits come out here and they've been eating it, but that's all moving. I don't want that. So anyways, I think that setup is really cool. I have the bed frames in the back. That I already had, Gary found them in the trash. Two tables, there's a metal table there. They have glass tops, holds it perfect. And I can put four dish pans on that. On the bottom, I've got some floral pots. You can use any 
any pop from the nursery, I've got four of those. Now these don't have holes. And the reason is I'm making my holes. We'll go over how I'm using the dish pans in the center here. Now when I overwater it, it goes on the bottom. So the radishes already are planted and anything that drips out of there, I'll catch the water. And of course, you know how I do my soil. I put in all kinds of paper and all kinds of stuff in there. And so as it's breaking down with the microbes, well, it's making plant food so I can use that somewhere else. And I still have my lettuce going, but there's too many in here. Way too many, so they're staying small, but it's okay because I can move them around. And as soon as I move them, they get big. So that's what's going on here. If you want to know more how to plant radishes, I should do something on that because the radishes are not planted in the same fashion as the oregano. No, that's a root crop. And if you put too much in a root crop, you'll end up with beautiful green leafy vegetables, but nothing on the bottom. So I had to do that different. Yes, this is still here. This, I'll, I'll just talk about it real quick because I want to get into this another time. This is being sitting, this is going to sit here until another month or two. It's kitchen scraps. Okay, you're going to say it's disgusting. I literally bring the buckets in. They already have holes in it. They got paper and stuff on the bottom. They're all set up and I throw the kitchen scraps in there and then I lug them out. Why? Because I'm not going to have any work in the spring. All I have to do is top it with soil and start planting zucchini. So there's, it's too long to get into. So that, that you're probably not interested in, but it works for me. I just tell Gary, when you're throwing stuff in there, the kitchen scraps, make sure you don't throw water in there because they already have holes and they are ready to go. This I'm gonna take out. It's just walking onions and a lot of um, sow thistle and stuff. See my mess? This I propagated in my little greenhouse and now I'm gonna get it planted. I brought that over here. Celery's from next door. Look at the lettuce. I don't know if you remember it from last week. There was nothing left. I'm pretty sure I showed it last week. There was nothing left on it because I used it. I took it all off and now look how big it's gotten already. Just in a week, growing really, really good. That's the broccoli and then some Swiss chard in there. I really have a major mess, a major mess. But you know what? I'm not gonna clean up just because I'm doing a quick video. You're gonna see the process of what it looks like. And hopefully, hopefully next week it will look a little better. I was planning on working out here, but it's been raining and I didn't wanna work out in the rain. I figured, no, I'll go work in the house and do something else. This is just sitting here. It's, I'm using it for layering, but I've got lettuce growing in here and then sow thistle, which we really don't want that because it takes away from the lettuce. This is not meant to be here, but lettuce flew in there and grew. So the seeds fell in there, so that's fine. That's basically it because I haven't done any changes. Actually, I think you can see the changes. Now I've got to still go through that. I need to dump the soil out, go through it, and then reuse that soil in this pot in another container. And then once I do that, then I can put something else in there. But all that's growing in there is just some grass that, you know, seeds that fell in there from the bird food and stuff that I feed the birds and just stuff off the other plants. Okay, but see how now everything is straight? I'm leaving all this here as far as how I'm going to grow is probably in flower pots. So I'll have a nice walkway to go through. This I'm going to leave because I'm trying well, to get more, just like more containers set up here. I love the dish pans. They look so small, but let me tell you something. They're almost as big as a five gallon bucket because they're four and a half gallons. You can grow a lot in there. I had tomatoes last year growing in them, all kinds of stuff. I even grew some squash. I can't believe this thing stood alive all through the winter so far. It's still living and still throwing flowers. Look at the flowers, tomatillos. I don't think it's going to produce anything right now, but we'll see. It's in a flower pot. Anyways, this I did want to move, but I built this contraption and the hummingbirds love it. Look at this. It's empty. I just filled it like an hour ago and it's already empty. I think they like it because they're hiding under it and they know that no hawk or anything can bother them. They like the shelter if it's raining and then there's holes in areas. So if it rains, it drips through, but they stay nice and dry. They really like it. Look, beans are coming up. I've got beans. Let's see what else is going on here. Just a mess. I put that branch there. My goal this year will be to set this all up for the Orioles, which will be here around March 14th. Now, 
the Orioles will feed here, and then the hummingbirds will feed over there in the window. Of course, you know that's not gonna happen, but that's just my goal. Because they're gonna come in here, and we have so many numbers of the, we've got the bullocks and the hoodeds that come in. The numbers have grown, is what I was gonna say, that they're gonna feed wherever they want. Oh, look at that. I am not sure what that was. Might be robins? but it could have been cedar wax. I hope you saw that, because I get so excited when I see that. The way they move, I'm not sure, but they're in that tree. Let me see if we can see them. What those were, there they are. Oh, there they are. You know what, they might be cedar wax wings. I'm trying to see on my phone. That's really difficult to see. Is that cool, the way they fly? But they could be robins. We've got tons of robins here. It's amazing how many, isn't that cool? Okay, well, whatever they were. Now we all got distracted by that. All right, so, look at this avocado tree's flowering. Oh, oh, and there's a little hummingbird on top. He's watching. All right, so that's my goal, to see if we can get the Orioles to feed mainly here, and then I'll clean this all up. I can come out here and enjoy myself. I've set up a bird feeder. I set that up and made that bird feeder from Let's see, the 99 cent store. I'm going to make another one from Dollar Tree and well, we'll fix it up. I put the flag there because they were sitting on the rail just pooping everywhere. All the birds, like 20 of them came in and I thought I'll put the flag there. Then they went, ooh, we don't know what this is. We don't want to sit on that. So they sit next to it. So it, now I hung it over. I changed it. I had it just hanging on the hook, but hopefully they'll sit more on the new feeder I put there and everything will go down and fertilize down there. Not that there's much to fertilize, but hopefully that's that's the theory, which isn't gonna work anyways. All right, so I think I've zipped you around. She, Kitty is not gonna come out. Look, we have tomatoes still growing here. Isn't that cool? So I've zipped you around. We got to see the big mess. I'll come back hopefully by next week. This is doing fantastic. Let's take a peek in here, but Look at this. I got this at the 99 cent store and I separated them and they separated beautifully. Look at that. So now I have two tomato plants instead of one. So I got two tomato plants for the price of one. So all is doing great. I'm excited. I hope it gets a little warmer. Cause what is it now? I think it's like 50 degrees. Let me see something on an old thermometer. I Oh, it's just under 50 degrees. I bought this thing like 20 years ago and the plastic that was on the front fell off and crumbled away to nothing. So I put a plastic bag over it because once it gets dusty, it's going to go bad. Isn't that cute? I found it when they used to advertise it in, I don't know, in the newspaper or something. Like I said, it was over 20 years ago. Could have been closer to 25 or more. And so I thought I'll put this out because I don't know if my other one is that reliable anymore because it's kind of rusted. But anyway, so that's how, that's the temperature right now. And I'm gonna empty this out, get this going. All this will be changed. I have lettuce going in here. This has been fantastic. We have a new way of putting tomato steaks in. So that's coming real soon. I'll show you how to do that because I'm redoing my entire yard. Every place I've got totes, containers, it's gonna be redone. There's gonna be, this is gonna be fantastic. And when you put a tomato steak in, no matter where you put it, it's gonna stay. And I am changing all that up. So that's it. We'll see what happens and what it looks like next week. And hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll go, oh, wow, she has done work. Instead of saying, oh, wow, she went shopping instead of working on the deck. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.